بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اقرأ بسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِّمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله We give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having guided us and we ask him to grant us the ability to act upon what he has given us knowledge of. Blessings be upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and those who follow the noon until the day of judgment that is Al-Quran that was revealed to him. Today I will briefly in light about the education in Islam. We know development focuses on improving the well-being of individuals on the basis of their participation and fair distribution of benefits resulting from their active participation which encompasses economic, social, cultural and political dimensions. Education is here recognized as one of the building blocks for sustainable development and to seek knowledge is a sacred duty. It is obligatory for every Muslim, men and women. The first verse of the Quran begin with the word Iqra. Iqra bismi rabbika lazi khalaq. Read, read in the name of thy Lord who created. So the first word revealed to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was Iqra which means to read, to seek knowledge. Educate yourselves. Be educated. The word Ikra it is a command that means read and that implies the concept of learning and exploring. This demonstrates that knowledge is the way to approach to the creator of that all exists. The Prophet of Islam, peace be upon him, has also emphasized the importance of seeking knowledge in different ways. Knowledge is a tree of actions. Knowledge is a tree of actions. And actions are the fruit of those trees. One can never be considered knowledgeable so long as he doesn't act upon what he knows. So, don't feel satisfied with the actions so long as you are lacking in knowledge. Nor feel satisfied with knowledge so long as you fall short in producing actions. Rather, combine between both of them. Even if you share two is small and there is nothing worse than a scholar whose knowledge the people abandon because of the corruption of his ways or an ignorant person lost ignorance the people accept because of what they see from his worship. Knowledge leads to action just as action leads to salvation. So, 
if the action falls short of the knowledge then the knowledge becomes a burden upon who possesses it the quran says in chapter number 39 verse number 9 are those who have knowledge equal to those who don't have the knowledge the importance of education has been emphasized repeatedly in the quran which is the ultimate source of guidance for muslims in verse number 20 in verse number 114 of the chapter 20 says my lord increase me in knowledge this verse indicates that whatever we know is limited as we need to keep asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase our knowledge. The hadith of Prophet peace be upon him also emphasizes the value of knowledge. As the hadith which I am going to narrate, which was narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, notes in Sahih Muslim, book number 12, hadith number 4005. When a man dies, his acts come to an end. But three, recurring charity or knowledge or a pious son who prays for him. So therefore, in the Quran and Hadith, the importance of education is explicit. In Islam, seeking education is obligated. It is compulsory and that knowledge is considered to be the path towards greater closeness to Allah. Knowledge can be broadly divided into two types. One is knowledge of religion and second is knowledge required by the community. It's the duty of every parent that we should educate our children with the proper knowledge of both the types. But when acquiring the second type of knowledge, we should make sure that the knowledge should take you closer to Almighty Allah, but not to make far from. The glorious Quran itself teaches about various religious as well as formal teachings of the world, such as Surah An-Nahl, verse number 66 talks about the production of milk and pulmonary blood circulation. Surah Al-Ambiya, verse number 30, talks about the theory of Big Bang, means the creation of the universe. Surah Al-Jumar, verse number 5, talks about the alteration of day and night. Surah al zariya verse number 47, talks about expansion of the universe. Chapter number 16 and verse number 79 of Quran also talks about flight of birds. And in the same manner, there are several quotations, there are several scientific facts mentioned in the glorious Quran. Our physics, chemistry, biology, geology, hydrology, so on. Yet, Muslims are very backward in education. Why? The backwardness of the Muslims in the last few centuries as far as education is concerned is because of few points number one muslim lost leadership in the field of physical science and technology because of arrogance which led to stagnation number two the invasion by the mongols who were barbarians and did not appreciate the value of knowledge they burned down the most prestigious libraries in baghdad in the 19th century when the Muslims attempted to revive the process of education and knowledge in their societies, they natively adopted the Western secular system, which had completely separated the religious sciences from secular sciences. The Muslim world, the Muslim world is still suffering from the dissection between the religious and the secular sciences. In Muslim history, no institutionalized censorship or suppression of scientists can be found. In the Muslim world, you find the harmonious combination of two types of knowledge, 
For example, in the person of Ibn Sina, you had someone who had written Al Isara on philosophy and metaphysics, and also Al Kanun Fit Tib on medicine, a book whose Latin translation was used as a text in Western universities till two centuries ago. Now the current dissection between the religious and secular sciences is the root of all problems in the area of education for Muslims worldwide. The greatest challenge for Muslims of the 21st century is the issue of bringing together of the two sciences, religious and secular sciences, in such a way that knowledge brings people closer to Allah and gives meaning to life on this earth. This is not impossible because historically the Muslims have done it in the past, right from the days of Imam Muhammad al Baqir till the downfall of Muslim Empire. We have Imam Muhammad al Baqir who taught theology to Hisan bin Hakam, Hadith to Zurara bin Ayan and science to Jabir bin Hayyan. In our Imams, we see the example of single source of religious as well as secular sciences. Islam has a holistic view of human development which views education and knowledge as central. Islam encourages the acquisition of knowledge and its use for the benefit of humanity. Furthermore, the principle of justice, equality and equity are important in Islam. By extension, this entails acquiring knowledge, wisdom and skills to carry out one's duties. While knowledge is needed to fulfill religious and spiritual responsibilities. It is also highly important for achieving social and economic development, for well-being of the community and for ensuring social harmony, freedom and human rights. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept their strives, struggles and efforts in a noble cause. Zazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. اشرقت نفسي بنور من فؤادي حينما رددت يا رب العباد